What's number one? It's Karthik and Moneyvest. So markets rolling over a little bit here as expected as we were looking forward to some kind of a pullback or a dip after, of course, we've seen the markets become very overbought on a technical basis as well as the valuation getting a little bit more stretched as we saw markets continue to hit new all-time highs. So this right here was the state of the markets today. We had the Nasdaq here dropping a little bit over 60 basis points. It was down way more than that. It was down a little bit over 1.2% at one point with the S&P 500 also down about half a percent and the Dow Jones rolling over just about 30 basis points on the day. We did have a lot of economic data that came out today. We had the GDP numbers as well as the jobless claims because tomorrow the markets are going to be closed in observance of Thanksgiving. Um, and so we also did have the inflation numbers. That's the personal consumption expenditure. That's the Fed's preferred measure of inflation coming in at a year over year basis at 2.3 percent and uh, that was on par with expectations and core pte which is the federal reserve's primary primary number that they look at which is over here year over year coming in at 2.8 percent which was also on par with the consensus expectations here so pce which is headline year over year coming in at 2.3 and core pce coming in at 2.8 percent month over month 0.3% and headline also increasing 0.2%. Personal income did also change on a year over year basis. We saw personal income at 2.7% increase with a month over month number at 0.6%. So wages are finally starting to catch up to inflation or rather I should say that inflation is finally down to a level where wages are growing on a year over year basis. Uh, but nonetheless, this is core PCE still sitting 80 basis points higher than what the Federal Reserve's target is, which is, of course, 2%. So when you strip out food and energy, that's the number the Federal Reserve wants it down to 2%. And we're still, of course, higher than where the Federal Reserve wants it. And uh, there's still expectations. There's still a probability that we're going to see a 25 basis point rate cut in December. We're about 20 days away from the Federal Reserve meeting, uh, including the summary of economic projections that also is going to be coming out. So very, very important. Uh, it's going to be wrapping up the entire a year with respect to monetary policy and whether we get another 25 basis point worth of cut along with what the Federal Reserve is forecasting for the future years. Now coming over to the GDP numbers and jobless claims, they came in at 213,000, so a little bit less than the consensus of 217,000. So this continues to be a very, very strong labor market with GDP numbers growing at 2.8%. Versus consensus of 2.8% as well. And personal consumption expenditure on an annual basis, annual rate at 3.5 versus consensus of 3.7. So GDP continues to be very strong. Economic growth continues to be very good. Unemployment rate, which of course we learned about in the first week of uh, first week of November and the initial claims also really, really low. And inflation is still slightly above the Federal Reserve's target. Now, very, very happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Markets are going to be closed tomorrow in observance of Thanksgiving. And we also have Black Friday uh, this Friday. And in observance of that, we've got a 70% discount that I wanted to address in this video. This is across the board for all of our courses, individual and bundles. 70% discount coupon code Black Friday and TradingView is also having their sale for Black Friday. 70% off and you can get one free month for that links are also going to be down below. So definitely take advantage of that if you've ever wanted to enroll in any of these courses including options course or fundamental analysis, technical analysis, psychology of investing. Uh now is the time. It's our biggest sale of the year. Uh coupon code Black Friday available until Saturday. That's when it expires. And uh, definitely take advantage of TradingView as well. Now, there are some big bets brewing um, from options traders on the treasury markets. And they are expecting a sell-off in a TLT and a little bit of an increase in the yields. And they are expecting yields to get up to over 4.9% with a year-to-date possibility high of 4.74%. So option traders bet on deep treasury market sell-off within weeks. And these bets include for 10-year treasury rate possibly eclipsing year-to-date high of 4.74%. JP Morgan treasury client short positions rise to most in a month. So we have seen a little bit of a pullback in the treasury yields right now, but there are a lot of option traders and tr investors in general that are expecting for yields to continue on this momentum higher, getting up to these levels at 4.5, 4.6, and 4.9%. And that's where the options market is very much suggestive of a sell-off in TLT, which of course is going to move inversely 
to the yields. Now, the reason for this could be, uh, you know, many reasons, but I think primary reasons are, of course, the fact that inflation is still pretty elevated compared to uh, what where the Federal Reserve wants it to be in terms of their target. There's been a significant, uh, you know, increase in the probability for uh, the interest rates to stay where they are because, you know, we knew that earlier uh, in the month and before, you know, Trump got elected, there was almost a done deal, so to speak, that interest rates are going to get cut in December by 25 basis points. Um, but now it starts to somewhat feel that we are on the fence. The market seems to be on the fence with no decisive answer whether we're going to get a rate cut or not. So again, a lot of it is dependent. You know, the yields continue to move higher on the back of a very strong economic growth, as well as inflation reaccelerating. I mean, that could be a potential reason also why the treasury treasury yields are moving. And on top of that, you've got the deficit spending and the national debt as another one of those primary reasons why the yields could be on the rise and why option traders are betting so heavily for a market sell-off in treasuries and, of course, the yields to go up. Uh, I've said this before. I mentioned this before in my previous updates and in the Discord as well, uh, that I think it's really, really important that we stay careful. We remain cautious uh, with these treasury plays because these are very macro-driven plays and it is really important to get the timing right, especially if you are trading some type of a leveraged ETF such as TMF. And for those reasons, I had a trade earlier this year, which I which I made some nice money on. But moving forward, um, I'm still a little bit more skeptical on where that top is going to be for treasuries. And I do believe there is a possibility for us to still move up on the 10-year treasuries. And if that happens, I think that's going to put some additional pressure on equities as well. Uh, and kind of we witnessed that a little bit today. Now, how S&P 500 tends to perform during Thanksgiving week, because this is Thanksgiving week and going into New Year's Eve as well is also going to be very, very important. So you'll notice that Thanksgiving week, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, the entire week, the markets on a median basis are up 75% of the times. 75% of the times we are actually higher uh, this week uh, by a median of 1%, an average of 0.88%. So if you come over to where we are for the S&P 500, so if I click over to S&P for this week here, we are up 49 basis points, so 0.49%. So that probability continues that we are indeed up. However, of course, no very near close to the average of the median number, but we are up. Now, tomorrow the markets are closed and Friday markets close early uh, in observance of Black Friday. So we're going to close at around 1 p.m. Eastern. So we really only have about a few more hours left of trading this week since markets are closed tomorrow. Now, what's interesting is next week. So if you come over to next week, only a 33% of the times we are higher. So 33% probability that we go up. And if we are down by an average of median 1% to as much as 68 basis points. So this right here would be very, very interesting. And I wouldn't be surprised if we do indeed see some type of a pullback uh, next week, uh, considering the Money Vest Index was also sitting close to 4 which we have talked about is a greed level in the market. And that's exactly why I am very cautious in this market. I really am only trading options at the moment. And when it comes to dollar cost averaging a little bit more aggressively, waiting for opportunities, waiting for prices to come to us. Now, Thanksgiving all the way to New Year's Eve. So presidential cycles going back to 1928 shows a bullish S&P 500 seasonality for the week of Thanksgiving, but robust bullish seasonality for the rest of the year. Uh, and this right here is a 75% probability that we see the markets go up between Thanksgiving and New Year's Eve by an average of 1.3% and a median of 1.6%. So uh, fear not, we are still on, on pace to closing the entire year very strongly with a very nice probability in the favor of the bulls to close out 2024 very, very strongly. I think it's just going to be next week that could be a little bit more dicey considering the probabilities going back as far as 1928. Now, this right here is what I mentioned in the Discord, healthcare leading the way, uh, as well as real estate um, on the markets, uh, bull sell-off in tech and discretionary sectors pushing up our healthcare, real estate, which has been the most underperforming sectors of 2024, as well as bonds, TLTS yields come down uh, and bonds have also been red in 2024. So TLT is also moving higher just a little bit here on the day. But as I mentioned earlier, some option traders are betting that that's going to reverse here fairly soon as we get a little bit of a pullback in yields. But we are going to start to see that move back higher, possibly up to as much as 4.75 to 4.9%. Uh, so we're seeing a little bit of a risk off environment on the day today with liquidity coming out of Max 7 and Big Tech. Rightly so, because we've been expecting this for a while, considering how overextended 
and overbought this market was. So money was indexed it's at 3.91. Uh, we're still in the optimistic zone. We were very close to being in greed uh, yesterday. I think the highest level that we came up to was 3.95 as of yesterday. And then if you come over to market concentration, over a $217 billion loss in the S&P 500 and MAX7 accounting for $129 billion and top 10 stocks, $144 billion. Some of the biggest losers on the day, of course, was Max7. We got NVIDIA, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, Meta, all part of that list. And stocks that were pushing up were Walmart and Visa and Berkshire Hathaway, Merck. Uh, SoFi did really well today. Uh, SoFi was up, I think, a little bit over 4%, uh, pushing up to almost $16. So there you go, $16.12, a little bit over 4% higher. It's done incredibly well. So massive momentum with a very, very overextended and overbought RSI. And MACD here and Palantir also managed uh, to actually was green at one point and was back down in the red and then still managed to close green near all time highs at over $66 uh, per share. So a lot of momentum coming in for stocks like SoFi, Palantir, uh, and of course, MicroStrategy has been doing an insane run up and then of course got a 37, 40% pullback. And now it's kind of stabilizing a little bit, uh, but coming over to the S&P 500, We've got a little bit of a pullback here on the day, despite being very up on the week. And we're pretty much trading at our resistance at 6,000. So this right here is clearly a very important level for the S&P at 6K. And uh, any type of a pullback going into, let's say, Friday or next week can put us down and support. It was going to be a 5867, 5800. So those are levels going to be to keep in mind for the S&P. And again, any type of buying opportunity for us is going to be good because we're going to be ready to deploy capital into individual stocks as well as ETFs. NASDAQ here down almost 60 basis points. Support level is going to be 18.6. So that right there is going to be that support level that we've been talking on the channel. Uh, volatility was slightly higher, 14 basis points up, but nonetheless still trading pretty low 14s here and, uh, and aggressively lower. And that's one of the reasons why I am also very cautious is because when the VIX is low, it's time to go and the VIX is high, it's time to buy. Crude oil prices trading at just under $69 a barrel at the moment and 10-year treasuries uh, did see a little bit of a pullback further down to under 4.3%. But as I said earlier, many option traders are betting that we're going to see a little bit of something like uh, stabilization, of course, start moving back up closer to 4.9 or 5%. And it's going to spur some type of a sell-off in the treasury market. In other words, TLT, TMF, some of those ETFs. And again, we'll continue to pay attention to how the treasuries are trading because that's also a very important proxy to a lot of the lending rates over in the US for a lot of different products, as well as how much pressure is that going to put on the equity market. Now, very quickly going over to the market snapshot as well. Uh, I mentioned this in our market updates. There's only three stocks that are still well within 5% of their all time highs are in a dip. Amazon, Apple and Netflix. Everything else is either in a pullback or a correction and three stocks that are in a bear market, which is Adobe. Uh, we got Qualcomm and we got AMD. Tesla's in a correction. We got Broadcom in a correction. Google's in a correction. And NVIDIA is also in a correction now, which is down over 11% from its all-time highs. NVIDIA obviously has been uh, selling off quite a bit. It's down another 1%. It was down more than that. It was down a little bit over 4% at one point. You can see that you know, we were obviously had a very nice recovery uh, at around 12 p.m. Eastern. We were down at 132. Seen a nice little recovery back up to 135. So NVIDIA finally catching some bids here at support, which we also have talked about on the channel before. But coming over to Apple here, uh, we're seeing Apple once again trade near all time highs, resistance 235, support level at 214. We're seeing a lot of consolidation in that range for Apple. Uh, coming over to Amazon, Amazon also here consolidating sideways, next resistance up to 216 here. Very, very strong area of demand and support inside this green rectangle for Amazon. That's gonna be sitting roughly at 197 for uh, Amazon here. And Tesla uh, has been struggling quite a bit. As I mentioned before, there's a lot of resistance at 361 to as much as 382 and 415, $416. That's pretty much the all time high. So resistance is going to stay put at 360 with a very, very strong area of support here inside this green rectangle, roughly in the 320s right now for Tesla. Now coming over to um, what is it? NVIDIA stock and NVIDIA obviously selling off uh, for three to four consecutive days, but we are finally starting to see some type of support. So after four days of consecutive selling, uh, NVIDIA finally starting to see some support and buyers to step in in the 130s and resistance all the way up to 149, close to $150 for NVIDIA. And SOXL has also been very weak. SMH has been very weak thanks to all semiconductor stocks 
uh, pretty much selling off quite a bit. You can see TSMC, Applied Materials, Broadcom, Qualcomm, LAM Research, Intel, ASML, everything has been selling off quite a bit. So resistance is going to stay put at 149 for nvidia uh coming over to advanced micro devices and amd also finding a very good support here inside this green rectangle sitting roughly in the 130s resistance all the way up to 150 dollars for amd all the way up to as much as 188 for amd as well so i do believe that advanced micro devices does offer a pretty decent opportunity for a potential swing trade um and like i said support level and that area of demand is going to stay put in the 130s here resistance up to as much as 150. Coming over to Palantir, and Palantir continues to charge higher. I would be very cautious with Palantir, as I'm sure you already know. Uh, very, very expensive valuation, technically is very overbought. And this is a stock that is uh, just trader's paradise at the moment, continues to move higher. There's a lot of momentum, there's a lot of buyers stepping in, but at the same time, I think it's really important that we remain cautious, especially if you are just learning about Palantir, if you are literally just getting started with Palantir, understand that this was a stock trading at six bucks not too long ago and it's now at 60 dollars plus now so again there's been a thousand percent increase in palantir so i just be very careful very cautious here at these valuations and at these technicals so any day i mean i could expect some profit taking some kind of pullback uh so those are certain things to keep in mind when you are looking at palantir so selling calls of course i mean palantir call premiums are just massive right now very very juicy just jumped up quite a bit. I was looking at $95 calls for December 25, and they were paying us over $760. That's a lot. That's a lot. I mean, $760, even a buy right is going to be yielding over a 10% return just one year out. So right there, I mean, you've got your nice 10%, 10 12% return on collateral, uh, even if you do a buy right. Uh, but of course, you've got to be comfortable holding on to those shares for the long term if Palantir takes a nosedive. Of course, you're going to make some money on the calls, but the underlying position is going to be red. It's going to be underwater. So those are some things to keep in mind for Palantir, of course. Now coming over to Meta Platforms here. And uh, Meta here consolidating sideways. Resistance is going to be at 600 bucks. Support level at 540. As we have discussed, a lot of consolidation sideways. And then coming over to Netflix. Uh, also got a little bit of a pullback here. Uh, very overbought, as we have discussed before. And support level is going to stay put down at 772. There might be some support in the low 800s for Netflix as well. Uh, Google, on the other hand, also continues to validate that support here in the 160s, finding some buyers and resistance is gonna stay put at 175. Uh, coming over to Microsoft and Microsoft also uh, getting rejected a little bit at this resistance in the 430s and 440s. A lot of consolidation, pretty much shooting sideways in that range. Uh, Microsoft is for a really long time. Uh, coming over to uh, PayPal and Visa. So this right here is gonna be PayPal. We've gotten rejected. At this resistance for quite a, quite a few times at 88 89 dollars uh, right now we're seeing a little bit of a pullback once again support level is going to be 81 82 dollars for paypal and then finally we come over to visa hitting new all-time highs again seeing a nice little breakout above this uh, area of resistance and support level is going to stay at a low 300s for visa and face continues to catch a lot of bits which is very very nice to see up another 2.6 percent slowly and steadily making its way up to that resistance at 73 74 dollars and support level is going to stay put at 58 59 bucks for end phase so nice little recovery there for end phase we had a l3 banker oscillator go off on november 20th so there seems to be some buyers stepping in some serious heavy buyers stepping in but the real question is going to be whether we get a breakout of this resistance or not so that right there is going to be the big level to keep in mind um and finally we come over to costco and Costco here on the day starting to pull back just a little bit down about 1% coming back down to that support. Uh, again, very overbought right now with the RSI and the MACD. So if you do see a little bit of a pullback, support level is going to stay put at $919 to $920 per share for Costco. So that's all I've got for you today. Happy investing, happy holidays, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Uh, hope you all enjoy your time with your friends and family. Uh, again, take a step back. You know, just this is the time to not look at the markets, not look at any of the uh, any what stocks are doing. Just, you know, enjoy your time with friends and family because that's what it's all about. At the end of the day, that's why we're doing this, right? So happy investing. Make sure that you drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and also don't forget to take advantage of all the amazing sales that are going on 70% off for all of our courses, individual and bundles. Coupon code Black Friday. You can pretty much go there and check out whatever course you want to take. It's going to be 70% off. And also take advantage of the trading view sale. Uh, it only happens once a year. Uh, link's going to be down below for this as well. Happy investing. And I'll see you all in the next video.